Hey y'all, I am back and I finally remembered that I'm going to read paranormal stories off of the email. So I am back with more of your paranormal stories. I wrote it in my calendar that I was gonna do emails and then yesterday I found myself on the subreddit looking for stories and I looked over at my planner and I was like, oh my God, I have to find them off the email. So I found three stories that I'm very scared to read today, but we're gonna get right into this because I really have nothing else to say. Oh, actually I do have something to say, but it's gonna take like two seconds and it's about the channel. I think I'm in a place where I feel comfortable enough to start uploading three times a week again. If you guys didn't know, I was like going to therapy for a really long time and I actually graduated for the second time from my therapy. And part of my issue and part of the reason that I kind of fall into a depression sometimes is because I burn myself out very easily. And so I was talking to John and we've come up with a solution for me not burning myself out. So I think I'm gonna do like three, two, three, two for uploads. So like one week I'll upload three times, second week I'll upload two times, the next week I'll upload three times. And if there's ever a week where I'm feeling burnt out, I'll just upload two videos. Because I've been doing really well with two videos and it's not burning me out like in the slightest bit. And I find myself getting really bored during the week. And so I definitely can upload a third video sometimes. So I think we're gonna get back into that little groove and I'm really excited. I'm excited that I'm finally gonna be like, consistent again. It's always been my goal to upload three videos a week because I do have the time to do it and I do have the content to do it and so I'm really excited to hopefully get back into that. But now we're gonna get into these stories. This might take me a hot minute to find them though because I like flagged the messages. I don't really know how to save them to like a separate file and I already found the first one so that was actually really easy. So this one says true creepy story. They said my mother and deceased grandpa had so many scary and creepy things happen to them so they would always tell their stories to me when I was little and I loved hearing them. Later in life, I started to experience scary and weird things too, so I have a lot of stories as well. If you want to hear them, just let me know. Anyways, back to the story. A real story that happened to me when I was little. To first start off, I want to apologize if there are any mistakes in the language, since English is not my native language. Also, I sent the story like 9-10 to 10 years ago to a national magazine, and it is a true story, and it won the award for most creepiest story, so I hope you'll like it, because honestly, I still have no idea what happened that day and how it was even possible. So I'm 24 years old now. At the time the story happened, I was six or seven, around that age. My grandpa, who had unfortunately passed away, was a police officer in a small town slash village where he lived in Bosnia. He experienced so many creepy things throughout his lifetime and his police career, and he had enormously large amounts of creepy stories to tell me. Some of them happened to him personally, some he just heard about. Since I always enjoyed scary movies and creepy stories, yeah, I was a weird kid, we would sit for one to two hours sometimes and I would just listen to him tell me all the creepy stories he either experienced or heard of. That night, my grandma promised me that we will have our horror story night where we would do exactly what I said before, sit for hours and I would listen to his stories. It was around 8 p.m., it was already dark, and he was telling me one of his stories. His phone rang, and he looked at me sadly and told me he had to take that call because it was his boss calling. I immediately knew that they will ask him to show up for work and was already very sad. Since my grandpa was a police officer in a small town where almost everybody knew everybody, there weren't many people, there were not many police officers. So sometimes when there was a storm or really bad weather, his boss would ask him to be outside and make sure people are driving safely to avoid any accidents. There was this one bridge where many accidents occurred, especially when it was raining. And since the storm was about to hit my town, my grandpa was asked to watch out for that bridge and stop cars before they got onto it to tell them to drive slowly and carefully. My grandpa asked me if I wanted to go with him to keep him company because the job was really boring. And like I said, it was a small town, meaning not many cars would drive at that time, maybe two to three cars, if so, per hour would pass. He told me we'll just sit in the car most of the time and when he sees a car approaching he'll get out of the car for a few seconds and do his job but throughout the rest of the time we'll be free, meaning he can tell me stories. Of course I agreed, it was even better for me to listen to his creepy stories outside in the dark when the storm is happening, you know, the creepy atmosphere. After a while, almost near the end of his working hours, I spotted a woman in the distance approaching. She was running with something in her hands, holding it closely to her chest. The rain was pouring so it was hard to see clearly. I told my grandpa about her and he spotted her too, and we were both confused because it was very late. Literally nobody was outside, and if they were, they were in a car driving, not on foot, due to the rain pouring insanely. As she was approaching closer to us, we noticed that she wasn't wearing normal clothes for the storm weather. In fact, she didn't even have a jacket. She was dressed in a summer dress that was barely covering her knees, and she was soaking wet. The weird thing is that this thing that she was holding was a baby that she held tightly to her chest as she was running. My grandpa got out of the car and stopped her, right next to our car. Even though it was pouring and the sound of raindrops were so loud when banging against the car, I could still grasp what they were talking about because they were literally standing right next to the side of the car. However, I wasn't able to understand everything, and due to my curious nature, I also decided to get out of the car and stand right next to my grandpa while he was talking to her. He was so focused on her that he didn't even say anything to me for leaving the car. My grandpa was wearing his police coat, which kind of looked like Russian coats, the ones that are really massive and warm. 
By the time I got out of the car, he probably already asked her why she doesn't have a jacket or questions like those, because at the time I was outside of the car, he was done questioning her and was, in fact, offering to give her a ride home. She was a very polite, beautiful young woman, around 25 to 30 years old, mentally healthy, nothing was indicating that something is wrong with her, in case you assume she was a psycho. She rejected the request of my grandpa for a ride home, saying that he is working and she does not want him to have problems because of her, saying how it's very polite of him, but she lives nearby anyways and not to worry. My grandpa insisted and said he will not let her run with her baby child in that storm. He would have to be insane to allow that, which he was obviously not. He then offered her a compromise, saying that he had his car and he doesn't need his coat and he wants her to take it. She can write her name down, address, and other important information on how to find her, and tomorrow morning he will come get his coat back. At first she was trying to refuse that offer as well, but very soon she realized that my grandpa will not let her go just like that, so she accepted it. My grandpa took his police notebook and started asking her for her information, such as her name, street address, house number, and he wrote it all down in his notebook. She told him not to worry about finding her house because all the other houses on the street are white and her house is bright yellow, so he'll recognize it as soon as he sees it. As soon as I say it, I just like had so much spit in my mouth when I said that it's not even funny and I'm not even going to re-say it because I think it's funny. She took the coat, put it on, and continued to run with her baby child still tightly pressed to her chest. Me and my grandpa sat back in the car and we were discussing what happened, but soon we realized his working time is over and we could go back home. Tomorrow morning he was getting ready, putting his shoes on and eating at the same time. I saw him and asked where he was going. He told me, well remember that woman from yesterday, the one that borrowed my coat? I'm gonna go get my coat back. I asked him if it was okay if I went with him and he said, sure, why not? We were driving to her house and I was holding his police notebook with her name and address written on it and other details. I was reading it to my grandpa who was focused on the road. Once we arrived to the street, we were not able to spot any bright yellow house, as the woman had claimed. All the houses were white. We were driving back and forth throughout the street multiple times and we were so confused because we could still not see the yellow house nor the written house number. Finally, I spotted a small, very tight passage, which was accessible only by foot. It was covered with lots of flowers and leaves, bushes, whatever you want to call it. Between two houses, which led to another house that was behind the two houses that were covering the view of the yellow house. That was the house, exactly as described. Bright yellow, correct number. However, we were confused why she would not mention the small passage that wasn't really easy to spot. In fact, she said as soon as we get to the street, we would notice her house, which was obviously not the case. We approached the house and rang the doorbell and waited. Nothing was happening. Complete silence. We thought that maybe she's not home. My grandpa tried ringing the doorbell one more time, and after a while, a woman opened the door. However, the woman that opened the door was not the woman that my grandpa borrowed his coat to. He apologized for disturbing and introduced himself, saying he's a police officer and asked if the woman, the name she had given to my grandpa, was home, and if he can talk to her. The woman at the door started laughing hysterically, which was a bit weird and scary, and me and my grandpa looked at each other very confused. My grandpa politely asked what was funny, and the woman said, Well, you're obviously too old to make jokes, especially this cruel. I'm not sure what you think you'll get out of it. Now I kindly ask you to leave. My grandpa looked at her very serious and said, Ma'am, I'm not joking, and I have no idea what is so funny to you. I borrowed my coat to the woman, her name, yesterday as she was running almost naked with her baby child in the storm. She gave me the information, this address, to come get my coat back. Now if you'll please tell me where she is. The woman suddenly had a very serious face and said, You really want to know where that woman is? Are you sure? Because I think you already know where she is. My grandpa replied, Yes, I want to know. Now please tell me. The other woman responded, well, the woman, her name, the one I later bought this house from, or to be more precisely, from her family, is in her grave and has been there for a long time. She died in a car accident many years ago in which her baby died as well. On one of the bridges, she was talking about the bridge where we had seen her. I'm pretty sure she hasn't been running naked during the storm, nor her child. Me and my grandpa were so confused, and of course my grandpa didn't believe the woman, and he thought maybe the woman liked the coat, since it was massive and expensive, so maybe she wanted to keep it or sell it. As my grandpa and the woman were at the door discussing, the woman said, Look, sir, if you do not believe me that she is dead, I can take you to her grave right now. It's not far from here, just a few blocks away. Once you see her grave, you can stop bothering me. My grandpa agreed because he thought the woman was lying. Once we arrived at the graveyard, what we saw is what I will never forget and never understand. As we were approaching her tombstone, we knew exactly which one was hers. The reason we knew was because my grandpa's coat was hanging over her tombstone. I still get chills all over my body when I remember that scene. We will never understand how it got there. How did we see and even talk to a woman who died so many years ago? That, I, okay, I knew from the second you started the story that the woman you saw on the bridge was dead. I feel like that was like, not obvious, but I feel like that's like the only direction the story could really go. But the fact that you found his coat on her tombstone blows my mind. 
I completely understand why this won an award for creepiest story. That is absolutely insane. Like unbelievably insane. I'm like mind blown right now. Like it's unbelievable. It's so crazy. Okay, and then this next story says, that wasn't my mom. Hello, Courtney. I live in Alabama, but the story I'm about to tell took place in Georgia. This happened when I was around five and I'm currently 25 now. So the memory is a little fuzzy, but will haunt me forever. When I was a little girl, we lived in a nice quiet neighborhood. I remember one day coming home from school and being exhausted. My dad and his friends were all outside on the porch, so I decided to take a nap on the couch. My mother was away at work and would not be home until around 5 or 6 that evening. I remember hearing footsteps and waking up to look, but nobody was there. So me being only 5, I rolled back over to sleep. As soon as I drifted off, I was shaken awake and being told to put on my shoes and that we were going to Walmart. It was my mother's voice. So I get up and look around, but I didn't see her. I didn't want to be left behind, and like a typical child, I halfway put my shoes on and bolt for the front door. I swing it open, and there's no car out in the driveway. I get upset and close it back. I go to my parents' room, and my dad is now asleep, also taking a nap. I wait on the couch and watch cartoons until my mother gets back. As soon as I hear the keys unlock the front door, I get up and go yank it open, asking my mother why she woke me up just to leave me anyways. But when I look at her, she's still in her work clothes, and says she just got off and that she never came home to tell me to go anywhere. Instantly, I knew it was not her at all. Another weird story that happened in the same house. I'd gotten a life-size doll for Christmas one year. One night, I decided to sleep with it. At the time, it was my favorite toy. In the middle of the night, I remember shoving it off the bed because I wanted the extra room. I began to feel weird and don't even know what made me sit up. I had a full body mirror at the end of my bed, directly beside my TV. When I looked into it, I saw the doll sitting in the bed beside me, looking directly at me. But when I looked beside me, nothing was there. I looked in the mirror again and it was still there staring at me. So I frantically tried to find an explanation and looked over the side of the bed where I shoved the doll earlier in the night. It was still there on the floor beside the bed. Without missing a beat, I turned my head towards the mirror to see the same doll still in the mirror. I screamed so loud, I woke up my cousin who was in the next room. I tell her what I see as quickly as possible and run to my parents' room and jump in their bed. I never slept in that room again. At 25, I still hate mirrors and refuse to buy my three-year-old life-size dolls. A lot of weird things happened in that house and I have not had a paranormal experience since. I really want to tell John that story because John has the biggest fear of dolls. Like we watched Annabelle the other night and John was like literally hiding under the covers. He's like, I don't know why I picked this movie because he picked the movie. He was like, I don't know why I picked this movie. I literally can't watch this. It's so fucking scary. So I'm going to read him that story and I'm going to freak him out. Okay. And this next story has a fuck ton of updates. So I was like really excited to read it because like this is still going on. Like things are constantly happening to this person. This says severe paranormal story. Hey, so I have a paranormal story for you that has been happening recently to me. My name is Zyan. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. I'm 16 and from Canada, Ontario. I love your videos and have been watching you for quite some time and I need another opinion on this story. You may not even see it, but I thought it'd be worth a shot. Here it is, I am saying it. Oh, and by the way, I sent this to others because I don't know what to do. So my whole life, I've been surrounded by spirits. I can see them and such. I do witchcraft, protection and stuff, and nothing has been working. Even called upon the seven archang archangels, is it archangels or archangels? For help and nothing seems to be working. I'm not Catholic or anything of that sort, but the situation has got me searching for crosses and holy water because sage didn't help. A few months ago, me, my mom and her boyfriend moved into an apartment. A grandmother gave me a bed. I instantly had bad vibes from it since it was a 50s to 60s insane asylum war bed. Yes, that old, legit. Why did your grandma have an insane asylum war bed? That's my question. We put it in the closet and I slept on the floor, refusing to sleep on the bed. I would do the same thing. My mother's boyfriend can see ghosts and had a nightmare and got scratched many times. My mom, who doesn't believe, had started having hallucinations and stuff, but still doesn't believe. Anyways, to cut to the story. The other night, I had a severe, lucid, vivid dream about this demon from my grandmother's house. I cannot say her name due to it giving her power. I'll get to that soon. I confronted my mom about her and asked if we had anyone in the family named this specific name. She said no, and I brushed it off. Even writing this, my throat feels tight. The other night, her boyfriend had a dream about this girl, and I woke up at exactly 5.05 a.m. Something told me to go out and confront him, so I did. Not thinking, I said the demon's name, and instantly I felt lightheaded. I could barely walk, talk, etc. I felt sick, I got water, they asked if I was okay, I said I feel like I'm gonna be sick, ran to my bathroom, and I threw up. I've encountered demons before, but nothing this powerful. I did protection circles, chants, everything, called upon the archangels, Gabriel, Michael, etc., and nothing helped. I'm normally around 100-ish pounds, and although that isn't a healthy weight, I have a severely fast metabolism. 
The reason this is a part of the story is because I've been eating, but I've lost my appetite and I'm now at 71 pounds, but I feel fine. I'm worried this demon is trying to take over me and I don't know what to do. Anyways, this is my story and I thought I would share it. And then this is the first update. This is an update I wrote the other day and was so scared to send it to you, but here's the update. So I'm at my grandpa's because it got too much. I wasn't sleeping, I was seeing the demon everywhere, and none of my protection I was doing was working. Upside down crosses started to appear. Crosses I had made on paper magically got ripped or was not found and so much more. As soon as I left, I felt better and thought it was gone. Anyways. The update is, I thought leaving for a week or two would fix things. It's been one day so far and things got worse. I think it's attached to me or something. I dealt with demons and spirits before, but nothing this bad. Last night, I was on call with my girlfriend and I had the lights off. She knows everything that's going on. She knows I can see spirits, sense them, and everything. I'm a psychic medium. Also, I have dreams that will later come true within the future. That's a different story for another day. Anyways, I was on a call with her and I felt the demon's presence. Again, I cannot say their name. It gives them power. Even writing this update, things are happening. Bangs, etc. I tried to fall asleep on call with my girlfriend and things got worse. Since I hadn't been sleeping for a few days prior due to the demon, I needed and wanted sleep. I ended up seeing the demon. Keep in mind, my grandpa has an ongoing vortex in his bathroom. I'm sure you've heard of what it is, but if not, it's basically where a mirror is facing another mirror. So he has three mirrors in his bathroom and a mirror in his door, and it's an ongoing vortex. I keep seeing her and hearing her mess with my mind. After that, I turned the lights on and I put a protection circle around me. It didn't work because when I woke up, I had scratches on my arms and back. And on my mirror was a handprint that slowly faded into an upside down cross. So I don't know, that's my update. If anything else happens, I'll update. If you ever read this, that is. And there's more, there's more updates. Oh, they said, if you read this, I have an update. Also, I changed my name to Moss, so please refer to me as that if you read this. I'm sorry that I, I didn't read that beforehand, so I'll refer to you as Moss. A few weeks later, nothing happened. I have DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder, that is relevant to the story I'll get to in a second. So I only know this because I have a book where they, my alters, write in and tell me stuff about what happened. I read the book and a lot happened. They were in the bathroom. I'm gonna call them by their name so it doesn't get confusing. Neva, I believe that's how you say it, was in the bathroom and she knows about the demon problem we have. The light started to flicker and she saw someone in the mirror, so she wrote. I encountered something. I was in the bathroom and lights flickered and so forth and I have severe ED and I'm in self recovery so I weigh myself to make sure I'm not under if you know what I mean. And as I did, the scale kept flipping through the numbers and stopped at 73 pounds, then went to 666, then shut off fully. It has never done that. As I was leaving the bathroom, I heard the demon laughter and the door shut before I could do anything. After a few days, my mother's boyfriend, who we all dislike, I mean, love dearly, kept saying the demon's name. It starts with a W and ends with, okay, I don't even want to say it because I don't even want to risk, I'm not gonna say it. After that, my LED lights flash to the point that I cannot see, the instant flash that hurts your eyes. Anyways, bags will randomly fall in the closet and so much more. I got scratched all over my back and legs today. And then there's two more updates. Hey, so I have yet another update on the ghost story, and once again, I changed my name to Bug. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I should have read this beforehand. I do this a lot, but anyways, here it is. I'm sorry, it's long again. My mom's boyfriend got a blessed cross, rosemary thing. I'm not Christian, so I don't know the actual name. And we put it where the closet door is, and let me tell you, shit gets crazy. When we put it there, everything was good for a week. At night when you're home alone, the door shakes like something's trying to get out. I saw a girl crawling in my room. I saw the demon itself. And even my mother, who is a huge skeptic in all of this, said she saw the demon. Thinking she was joking with us, I asked her what she looked like and she described her to the T. It was scary. So I went into my room and I do witchcraft. I started when I was six, I'm now 17, so I've been doing this for a while. Every protection I've done has backfired on me. My crystals get thrown to the floor. And then this is the last update. This story is crazy. Like, I feel like... I want more details about this because like, I feel like your updates are very short and you're just like, that this stuff is happening, but like, I need to know more about this. Like I need more details. Update on the demon. It tried to choke me and tried to kill my mother's boyfriend. My TV was not plugged in at all and it somehow turned to static and a lot of crazy stuff has happened. The cross we got that was blessed never worked or anything and it made things worse. I swear this is the next Annabelle or something. That's weird that I just talked about Annabelle. One of my altars, Cobra, took a photo of my altar. I'll try to show the photo, but you can clearly see a shadow of somebody. They didn't like include the photo, so I don't have it. We came to the conclusion that this demon isn't what it seems to be. I know I'm getting annoying with these updates, but I got nobody else to tell this, so here is the update. Pixie, formerly known as Bug. Okay, so Pixie is the current name. I got it. And that's all the updates that we have so far. And this is like an ongoing thing, like shit con is continuously happening to them. 
and I need to know the rest of it. Like I absolutely need to know more. That was like six updates in one. Also, I want to know more information. Like what happened when they choked you? How did they try to kill your mother's boyfriend? I feel like you like run through these stories so quickly. You're just like, this happened and then this happened and this happened and I need to know everything. I literally need to know everything. But that is all I have for now. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any other stories that you want to share with me or the community, I will have my subreddit link down below. I will have my email down below as well, but I really don't read off of the email. So if you're able to post on the subreddit, please post on the subreddit because that's where I get a majority of my stories. But like, honestly, all three of those stories were pretty insane. So maybe I should read from the email. Maybe that's where I get like the really, really good stories. Not that the ones on the subreddit aren't good, but like sometimes they're kind of bad, but sometimes some the ones in the email are kind of bad too. Like they're like, my TV turned on at night and then that's the whole story and I'm like, I can't put this in a video. <laughs> oh my god, look. Okay, so I know I'm not done with the video yet, but like, look how cute Rumble is up there. Can you see him? He just, oh, he's so cute. And then Nar is right there too. I don't know where I'm pointing. Nar is right there. But okay, I'm gonna go. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you in the next one. Bye. Uh. I've decided that this is my new hairdo. I've, I've worn my hair like this for the last like two weeks. I've not changed my hairdo. I've decided that this is my new look. Um, and I'm probably gonna wear my hair like this for the next 20 videos until I get sick of it. So you're just gonna have to deal with it. This is my new thing. My new do. Also, I'm so excited because I get my hair lightened in a couple of months. We do a test strand in like two weeks to see how much lighter we can get my hair. But I'm excited for it to not look orange on camera anymore because again, it's not orange in person. It's a little orange in person, I'm not gonna lie. But it's not that orange in person, but yeah. I'm excited to get my hair done. Okay, what am I talking about? Okay, see ya.